Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the ultimate guide about how you can control and use your GoPro Hero 8. I've done a couple videos about this already with other GoPro models, also with the GoPro Hero 5, Hero 7, and now I'm doing exactly the same video for the GoPro Hero 8, because there are always some small things that have changed. I will explain you how you can turn on your camera, how you can turn it off, how you can record a video, how you can change the frame rate, how you can take a photo in JPEG, how to take a time-lapse video, how to take a series of shots, how you can control the GoPro only with your fingers without even looking at the touch display. And at the end, I will explain you how you can connect your GoPro Hero 8 with your smartphone. The principle is the same since the GoPro Hero 5, however, I will explain it anyways for you. And if you have any open questions, please make sure to write a comment below. So now enjoy this tutorial and as usual, you'll find all the equipment I use to record this video and also the GoPro Hero 8 and my memory cards I usually use for taking videos and photos using the GoPro in the video description below. So this is the GoPro Hero 8 Black, cold and dark. As you can see, I'm charging this camera at the moment since I might run out of battery for this tutorial. So don't wonder. So there are two ways to turn on the GoPro Hero 8 Black. The usual way would be at this side as a power on and power off button. So if you hold that for two seconds, there is the screen of the GoPro Hero 8. That's the intro screen that you usually can expect to see if you turn on the GoPro for the first time. So here is the touch display. As you can see, there are several languages you can choose from. And since this is an English tutorial, I would like to choose English as my preferred language. Legal stuff, you have to agree to that. And that's the question if you like to turn on the GPS or not. An example. You're taking some nice footage in the desert of nowhere or you're at an island of nowhere and you have no clue where you are. It is wisely to turn on the GPS. Once you're at home, you might be able to review your location in a software like Adobe Lightroom or in the GoPro software even. And you can spot where you took these couple of shots, photos and videos since the GoPro Hero 8 is equipped with a GPS, so it tags basically your location. Next step would be GoPro app. Please make sure to download this app because we need it anyways later on in this tutorial when I show you how to connect your GoPro Hero 8 Black with your smartphone. Tap on the arrow here and at the moment I would like to skip the setup. Now it's time to choose a date. Here are the days, let's take the 12th of, I don't know, let's take November 2019, tap on OK, and now it's time to set the time. You can choose between hours, minutes, AM, PM, or you can also choose the 24 hour format. Let's say it's 1820, tap on OK. And that is the screen of your GoPro Hero 8 Black. Swipe from the top to the bottom, go to Preferences, Touchscreen, Brightness, and turn it down just for this review or tutorial. Now I guess you can see everything much better. Go back. And that's the usual screen that you can expect to see once you turn on your GoPro. I said there are two different ways to turn on the GoPro. So let's switch it off first. At the side, there's the on and off button. Tap on it for two seconds. Powering off. I showed you already how to turn on the camera by holding this button for two seconds, but there's another way. If you tap on the shutter release button, for two seconds, or what, even one second, the camera starts to take a video straight away. If you push that button once again, 
the GoPro stops the video and it's turning it off again. So that is called quick capture mode. Turn on the camera the usual way, tap on the on and off button, hold it for two seconds and we are back in the game. Let me explain you the screen very quick. On the upper left side is a green symbol that is your memory card. At the moment I'm using a 64 gigabyte memory card on this GoPro Hero 8. My favorite one is by the way listed in the video description below. With this memory card and this resolution down here in 1080p 60 frames per second we're using wide as our format I can take 2 hours and 28 minutes of video recording. If I tap on this one here and take just another format very quick. Let's take 4K 30 frames per second. I can only take now 1 hour and 56 minutes of video recording since 4K is much bigger in file size than 1080p. On the upper right side as you can see I'm charging the camera at the moment that's why you have that charging symbol up here and at the moment I'm in video mode that's why the video camera is listed up here. There are two dots left of the video camera and right of the video camera. So if you want to go from video mode to photo mode swipe with your finger from the right to the left. Now you're in photo mode. If you want to go back to video swipe from the left to the right and if you want to go to the time-lapse mode switch from the left to the right. Sometimes you see some hints they're quite useful if that is your first GoPro camera. There's also a different way to go from time-lapse mode to video mode and to photo mode. Here's that on and off button tap on it just once don't hold it for one or two seconds just tap on it very quick and as you can see now I go from photo to time-lapse and back to video mode. Swipe from the top to the bottom. And now you have some couple symbols here. Upper left is the time, upper right is the date, down here is a grid. Use a grid to help frame your shot. That's also kind of useful once you try to Align the GoPro Hero 8 with the horizon for instance. As you can see now you have some gray grid lines on your GoPro Hero 8 display. You can turn them on and off by tapping on this grid symbol. The next symbol is quite useful because that is voice control. Control your GoPro using simple voice commands. Okay. Keep current language. In this case I'm using English. It's asking because your GoPro might run maybe in German but the voice control can be in English as well or the other way around. I would like to keep English as my language. Let's try this out very quick. Go to preferences, tap on voice control. You, from here on you can turn it on and off. Wake up voice control, that's quite useful because you can wake up your GoPro by calling it hey GoPro or I'm not saying it at the moment but that's the command that you need to use. GoPro turn on. See it works. Actually it turn it off now. And down here you can choose a different language. English UK, English US, French, German, Italian, Japanese and so on and so on. So at the moment let's stick to English US. Scroll down and here is a list of commands that you can use. These commands are also available on the GoPro website. Make sure to use exactly these kind of commands otherwise it will not work correctly. So for instance we can take the second one. GoPro stop capture. GoPro stop capture. GoPro photo mode. GoPro take a photo. GoPro start capture. GoPro time lapse mode. As you can see, if you are not using the specific commands which are listed here, it won't work. So always stick to these ones. 
GoPro, start recording. GoPro, stop recording. I think you got what I was trying to show you and let's switch off voice control. The next point is that beep control at all times. You can turn this off again, if you can see, beeps, turn off camera, beeps, on and off. And now it doesn't do that beep anymore. Quick capture on and off. You can also lock your display. Down here, that is the orientation lock. Rotate your camera to the orientation you want, then tap to lock. So if you turn it upside down, you can lock this position and then it will turn the video on your, com on your computer the right direction. If you don't use orientation lock, your video might be upside down even on your computer. And to avoid this, you can use the orientation lock. If you go to preferences, you have the first point, which says connection on and off, but we come to that point at the end of this tutorial. Let's go to general, and here is the beep volume. Usually it's at high, however, I can recommend turn it at least to low, because once your camera is on a helmet, for instance, and you don't see any screen, and you turn off the beep volume, you have no clue if you press the correct button to start or stop a video. That's why I can recommend to use at least a low level of the beep volume. Here is the feature I showed you previously, quick capture on and off. Here's also the default preset. That might be interesting for you since you are taking mainly photos using your GoPro or you're taking mainly slow motion or you're taking mainly live burst or a video. So if you use a photo as a default setting, once you turn on your camera, it will be straight in photo mode instead of video mode. And a standard would be in this case, the video mode. Auto power off after 15 minutes. You can also select different times here, as you can see. LEDs, I turned them all on. It's the red one here. It's the red one at the, on the other side. Anti-flicker, that might be interesting if you're in a hall, maybe with um, some artificial light. Video compression, here you can choose between H.264 and HEVC or only HEVC, depends on you what you want. Then you can, of course, change the time, the date and the date format. If you go back here, you can go to voice control, which I showed you previously in this video. Touchscreen, as you can see, orientation is at the moment all. That means once you uh, turn the camera upside down, it will also record the video upside down. Or if you turn it to a landscape, you always have a notification of what is going to happen then. Screensaver after one minute, let's say at least a three minute. Brightness control, you're familiar with that already. At regional, there is one important feature missing at the moment or I miss something at the moment. The GoPro Hero 8 is quite new. So you can either turn on and off your GPS. You can select a different language. But here's one point missing. It is to change from a poll to NTSC. Let me show you this on the GoPro Hero 7 as you can see because video format lets you change from Paul to NTSC. And I have no idea where this point is on the GoPro Hero 8. I'm just guessing at the moment that uh, GoPro will fix it with a firmware update. So on the GoPro Hero 7, as you can see, you can choose between Paul and NTSC and that is important for your frame rate. Because at the moment, I can only select at the GoPro Hero 8 frame rates of um, 60, 120 or 30 frames per second, but not 25, 50 or 100 frames per second. Input, output, this point becomes only available if you use that original GoPro microphone adapter, which allows you to connect an external microphone 
to your GoPro Hero 8 Black. I've done already a video on how to use these settings. Just look on my channel, it's called How to Vlog with a GoPro, where I tested different kinds of external microphones using this adapter and the GoPro Hero 7 Black. But it's the same principle also on the GoPro Hero 8. About is about GoPro updates, camera info and battery info. To make any GoPro firmware update, you need an active internet connection, a smartphone and the GoPro Hero app. A reset format SD card so once you backed up all the files on your computer and you want to clean your memory of the micro SD card just hit format SD card reset presets reset camera tips that might be interesting for you if that is your first GoPro and you want to have that hint again maybe at a certain stage or you missed something or factory reset if you want to resell this camera just tap on factory reset and then press reset. And as you can see, there is a little gray bar, which you can slide now from the bottom to the top. So let's start with a video recording. Really simple here, as you can see, it's the digital lens, change how much of the scene is captured in your shot. That is a new feature on this GoPro, on this one here, because you can see the millimeters. So that's linear. As you can see, all the lines are now straight. So you don't have that fisheye look anymore. That is wide, 16 to 34 millimeter. And that is the super view. As you can see, now it's basically recording, as you can see, like 160, 170 degrees of footage, or maybe even less, 150. I have no clue, but it's, it's it's it looks like fish eye effect see that i can bring this flower here a little bit closer and it's still on that lens my favorite type of um, filming would be wide anyway so it's not uh, distorted all the edges so here's slow-mo as you can see it's just a normal video at the moment hit stop and to replay the scene slide from the bottom to the top as you can see, it's still a normal video, but now you have that little symbol down here, playback speed. Replay, slow-mo footage in slow motion or in real time. Let's use slow motion. And tap on replay again. As you can see, that is now playback in slow motion. If you choose 1080p instead of 4K, and slow-mo is still engaged and if you hit that shutter release button I do another scene here tap on stop it replays it in slow motion but we come to that point later on once again for the moment we switch it off here is hyper smooth boost maximizes video stabilization with tight cropping just have a look now at the background of what is going to be in the frame or not. So let's switch it off once again. Just look at this flower here for a second. If I turn stabilization on, it crops in and you don't see that much on the final image. However, that is the image stabilizer, which is really good since they have released the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Obviously I wanna use it that's why I leave it on. Let's say you want to change from 1080p to 4K or change uh, the frame rate, for instance. Just tap on standard. Here are a couple presets that you can use that we're now in video mode. You can also shift these settings with your finger, like on your iPhone or your smartphone. And to change any settings now, let's say the resolution or the frame rate, just tap on the little pencil here, resolution, FPS, so resolution and frames per second. And as you can see, sometimes you have different kind of values when it comes to resolution and frame rates. Since we're now recording in 1080p, I can select from 24 to 30, 60, 120 and 240 frames per second. If I'm gonna use 4K, I can only select 24, 30 or 60 frames per second since that is the maximum frame rate 
the GoPro Hero 8 can capture in 4K. I can also select 2.7K with a 4.3 format. Sometimes you do have these hints. At the moment I don't want to read them. Here's 1440 and it always gives you kind of different frame rates that you can use in this resolution. 2.7K with a maximum resolution of 120 frames per second, 1080p as shown already, 240 frames per second, but I guess without image stabilization because that is only until 120 frames. And let's say you want to record a video in 4K, tap on 4K and the maximum you can do is 60 frames per second, but for the time being I just leave it at 30 frames. Swipe up. Here's the lens once again, that is the digital lens, that is super view, that is linear, hyper smooth, high. So there are different kinds of um, image stabilization, low light not available for this kind of clip. And clip is uh, might be important for you because let's say you do a sport exercise and you don't want to have, for instance, a video of two hours because you're doing it over and over again you can choose either a 15 second clip or a 30 second clip. So for instance, I'm gonna use now a 15 second clip. Go back on your camera, start a video by tapping once on the record button. And as you can see here is now that orange line that goes around your camera display. And it now takes a video of only 15 seconds. So you had the opportunity to choose between 15 and 30 seconds. And this video was now recorded. It's on your memory card. Let me turn it off. Down here, as you can see, these kind of settings are for people who really want to do more maybe in also in post editing. So ProTune, you can choose the bit rate here, the shutter, exposure compensation. You can also select a white balance. So this is at the moment set to auto. And here's, it goes into from warm to cool. But at the moment I leave it in auto because that is the best setting for this kind of scene here. You can select a minimum ISO, a maximum ISO. The maximum would be at ISO 6400. Sharpness. GoPro color is nice if you're interested in any color grading during post editing. So that is the normal GoPro picture profile and you can also select a flat profile. Raw audio. That is a new feature on the GoPro Hero 8. That is create a raw audio track with minimal processing. And it always gives you some examples here or hints of what you can do or what it's capable of doing. At the moment I switch it off because anyone who deals with these kind of settings is more into GoPro already and these kind of things what you can do down here so in ProTune are more for people who are really doing any kind of post editing. On screen shortcuts also new on the GoPro on the lower left I can say mm, maybe I would like to have there the white balance. And let me see what's going to happen now. If I go out of the screen, here is the white balance. If you want to go back into the settings again, tap on the pencil, go down and you can select another point, let's say hyper smooth. As you can see, now the hyper smooth is on the lower left and on the upper right, which doesn't make any sense at all. It is just for demonstration purposes. Down here, manage presets, restore, and now it's the preset that we had be at the beginning. Activity, so these ones are kind of different modes that you can use. You can make your own adjustments, see ProTune, frame rate, resolution. Let's go to something cinematic, 4K, linear. So these ones are some presets already. You can adjust them like you want and it will keep these kind of settings later on. And you can also customize your settings even more by tapping on the plus. And in here you can choose maybe 
for instance, a, a sport profile. Let's say you want to do some slow motion videos in post and um, at a resolution of 1080p with 120 frames per second. Let's just make a preset here. You're in a half pipe, so I record in white. Hyper smooth is on for the time being. I choose now here a flat profile and then I save these settings and then I can say, well, this kind of setting is always nice for outdoor. Save. And now as you can see, this preset was saved onto your video presets, which is really nice. If you tap on it again, swipe to the bottom, you can delete this preset on your discretion. At the really bottom, you have the slow-mo feature. It's already saying 1080p with maximum 240 frames per second and it records in white at the moment. You can select also a different kind of frame rate here. It's also, also available in 1440 with maximum 120 frames per second or in 2.7K also with a maximum of 120 frames per second and 1080p footage up to 240 frames per second. Adjust all these kind of things as you need it to. And that is the video mode. I go back to standard because that is the, the, the kind of video I'm doing most of the time. If you want to zoom into your footage, that's possible as well by using the touch zoom. You can start a video straight away. Next topic is about the photo mode. So how to get back in photo mode. As you can see, we're here now in video mode. Here's the time-lapse mode on the other little dot here. And on this dot, we go into photo mode. So take your finger right to left and jump into the photo mode. What are we seeing here? The battery indication on the upper right side, 80%. We can take uh, with this memory card more than 999 photos, but I, I guess with 64 gigabyte and only taking photos in JPEG at the moment, I, I would be able to take more than 20,000, I guess. Here's the zoom as in the video mode. So we have narrow, linear and white, but there's no super view. Here's a timer, that is nice if you want to record yourself. You can choose between 3 and 10 seconds. Let me demonstrate 3 seconds for a second. Tap on the shutter release button once. And here's your photo. If you want to deactivate it, scroll it down and now it's off. Output. Choose the type of photo you want to take. Ooh, nice. So that is standard, that's a raw photo, that is mainly for the people who would like to do any post editing with your photos, so maybe in Adobe Lightroom. Then you have HDR, that is kind of useful if you have lots of contrasts in your photo, let's say you're in the sun, there are shadows and sun and it's continuously changing, that gives you more dynamic range and there's also a super photo. To be honest, I have no idea what a super photo does, but I guess it's kind of a mixture between an HDR and a standard photo. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can take a photo. I can switch back to raw if I want to. And here is no zoom feature available. If you go to standard, you can zoom in. Take a photo, but it's now not possible to record it in RAW. The same settings apply to the photo mode. If you tap on that, as you can see, there's a bunch of lists that you can choose from. Photo, tap on the little pencil. Output might be important for you, since you can choose between JPEG, HDR, Superphoto and RAW. Here's the lens that you can use linear, narrow and white, timer as seen before, zoom. Protune, these settings are important for you if you do any post editing, like in the video mode. So you can select the shutter speed, the exposure compensation. So if your photo always tends to be underexposed, 
slide it a bit upwards. If your photo tends to be always overexposed, slide it slightly downwards in the minus direction. For this demonstration, I just keep it to zero. White balance as seen in the video mode. Here you have the minimum ISO, the maximum ISO, and the maximum you can take is ISO 3200. Sharpness high, color. You can choose between GoPro color and a flat profile. On screen shortcuts, like seen in the video mode. Let's take a color very quick. Go out of this menu to see what changed. Here is now flat profile. And here is the GoPro color profile. Let me take now white balance for instance, just to demonstrate of what's going to happen. White balance, warm, cool, auto. And of course you can change the other on-screen shortcuts like you want them to on the lower right, the zoom on the upper right, the timer, as you need it to. And you can restore them. Let's go back here. And here's a live burst. That is a new feature that was not available on the GoPro Hero 7. So what it does, you can choose basically, if you tap on that little pencil here, between 8 and 12 megapixel. It also says this high performance resolution is only capable with the latest high-end phones. Since I'm, I have an iPhone 8 Plus, it, it might still work, but however, I'm just gonna take it an eight megapixel very quick. Here's a timer, as you can see some on camera shortcuts, but that's the only uh, options you have on here. And basically what it does, if I tap on the shutter release button once, go back to playback, as you can see, that was not a video scene, that is a photo scene. Swipe from the bottom to the top. There's now a number that runs really quick. So I took now 90 photos in a resolution of eight megapixel. It looks like a video, however, we took a photo scene. That is kind of a feature that you might need for any kind of sport activity. Or maybe for an experiment or something like that. Burst, quite important for also taking sports. So burst, it gives you an output. Either you save all the files in JPEG and RAW or JPEG only, lens, burst rate. And this is important for these kind of people, maybe in school or in the university, if you wanna do any kind of experimental stuff, if you're doing any kind of sport. As you can see, you can take five photos in one second, you can also take 10 photos in one second. If you slide that further upwards, it says you can take 30 photos in three seconds. So let's stick to that very quick. Down here you have some advanced settings, exposure compensation, white balance, minimum, maximum ISO sharpness and on screen shortcuts. So burst rate, 30 photos in three seconds. Tap once on the shutter release button. At the moment it looks like if the camera would hang up in itself, but it took 30 photos in three seconds. Like it says here on the bottom side, swipe from the bottom to the top, and now it runs through the pictures we just took together. And these ones are now saved as JPEG files. Maybe you have found a nice photo because you were showing your audience any kind of trick. Tap on this little symbol down here, that is seek. And let's say you really like this kind of photo, use this highlight feature to tag this favorite moment. Let's say there's another one here, frame 26 was really nice and frame 28 was really nice as well. And now it tagged these kind of photos and you will be able to see these kind of tags later on in the GoPro Hero software or on the app. Tap on it once again, night scene, also quite important for anyone who is out there to, and who wants to take really nice photos during the night because that is possible also using a GoPro. But so many people out there don't understand the principle of photography. So don't expect that the camera takes great photos during the night. 
if you let it run in the automatic mode, since then it's compensating any kind of missing light with a higher ISO value instead of using a longer shutter speed. Inside the night shot, you can choose the lens, the shutter, that is important now, because here you can take a shutter speed up to 30 seconds. If you want to take a photo of the night sky and you have your camera sitting on a tripod, take a shutter speed of 30 seconds, go down, say maximum ISO, uh, yeah, I would not go above ISO 800 and let the camera take an outstanding night sky photo or any kind of other scene, it depends on you. Here's the output, if you want to save them as a JPEG or RAW files, here's a timer. That is, I can also recommend using the timer if you take longer shutter speed to avoid any kind of vibrations. So once you turn on the timer, select three seconds. Once your camera is sitting on a tripod, take a shutter speed of let's say 30 seconds, tap the shutter release button and then you don't have any kind of vibrations next to the camera to get a sharp image. Down here, some other settings like Protune, Exposure Compensation, White Balance, Minimum, Maximum ISO, Sharpness, Color, you can choose between a GoPro color and a flat profile, and once again, on-camera shortcuts. At the bottom, as you can see, there's this plus symbol once again. In here, so simple, you can select whatever you want as your preference. In this case, let's take a burst mode, output, I would like to save them in JPEG and in RAW, lens, linear, burst rate, as you need them to, let's say 30 frames in 10 seconds, timer, yeah, maybe three seconds, Protune settings, I don't need that at the moment, tap on the arrow up here, and this kind of scene is now an outdoor setting. I don't know if it's really an outdoor setting. However, if you tap on that, there's my timer of three seconds. So you can build up your own presets of the stuff you would like to do. See, it's now taking 30 photos in 10 seconds. It's saving them in RAW plus JPEG. And that is a preset that you can create on your own if you use certain kind of settings at all times. You don't have to change it in the camera menu if you use them maybe daily. Out of the photo mode into the time-lapse mode. So either left to right, now you're in video mode, or take this button here on the side, the on and off button, press it once or twice and then you're in the time-lapse mode. We are back in the game. Lens with this kind of setting, so time warp, 1080p, auto, white, one hour, 55 minutes of memory card available, 69% battery, zoom in, zoom out. And here in the submenu, time warp is one of my favorite features since they have released the GoPro Hero 7 because you can choose between 1080p, 4K, 2.7K and 1440. You can select the lens type. The speed is important. Auto is a new feature. Then you have speed up and stabilize your video by 2x. That is a really cool feature. Imagine you are recording your girlfriend while she is walking at the Times Square, for instance, in New York, take a 2x speed, and then it gives you a hint, which says one minute of recording creates about 30 seconds of time warp video. The further you go up, the maximum speed you can take. So five minutes of recording creates about 10 seconds of time warp video. That is way too quick for the work I'm doing. So in regular, I'm doing like a 5x or 10x speed. So here's a hint, five minutes of recording creates about 30 seconds of time warp video. And here's now an example of how it looks like. Also some Protune 
settings available for these kind of shots and on camera shortcuts. That's a regular time-lapse video. If we tap on the pencil here, you can choose the resolution, the lens, the interval, format, video. I come to that in a second. Let's take another resolution. Let's say 4K. I would like to take a 4K time-lapse video. Choose the lens you would like to use. And now the interval. Let's say you take a time-lapse of something which happens quite quick. Use a small interval, maybe two seconds. If you would like to take a time-lapse video of something which doesn't go that quick, maybe a kind of construction of your house or whatever, you can, or I recommend, take a high interval, let's say five or 30 minutes. Make sure to connect your GoPro to any kind of power bank so it does not run out of battery that quick. And now what it's doing, it takes a photo every 30 minutes. And if you're recording a time-lapse video in 1080p, so the resolution, with 30 frames per second, you need 30 minutes times 30 which equals one second of a time-lapse video. So let's take 10 seconds for instance, 4K, interval 10 seconds, and now important format, because you can choose if you would like your camera to take that time-lapse for you by creating a time-lapse video out of the camera or if you would like to have a time-lapse photo because maybe you would like to do any kind of post editing with these kind of files and you would like to merge them together and post maybe on your computer then choose photo and if you would like to do that without any kind of knowledge just choose video and the camera puts out a time-lapse video for you without any post editing. Protune settings are available for time-lapse as well and on camera shortcuts. Night time lapse, really important. Tap on the pencil, choose the resolution, let's say 4K. Interval, let's say like five seconds. Format, video or photo. And now you can choose also the shutter speed. So what am I doing here? I would like to take a stunning 4K night time lapse video but at the moment i choose photo you here you can switch between photo and video however i can always recommend during the night take your time lapse in a photo mode choose an interval or a shutter speed which is appropriate according to the situation you're in that means maybe you would like to see the night sky passing by then it might look interesting if you take a shutter speed, for instance, of five seconds. So maybe you would like to record the night sky passing by. So what I'm telling now the to the camera is, dear GoPro, please take a photo every 30 seconds and expose that photo for five seconds because it's really dark outside. Save it then as an individual photo later on I'm going to grab the memory card, take it into my computer and merge these files together because I would like to do some post editing with these kind of individual photos as well. So maybe change the white balance in the in post. Excellent and easy stuff, but it's the footage itself looks really nice taken with the GoPro. Here are some Protune settings as before and on screen shortcuts. And what is this? display actually for really really easy at the moment as you can see because i know the symbol here by my memory uh, we are in time warp mode and at the moment we would record a time warp in 1080p 10x speed wide and we took already 25 clips if we use that settings we can record a time warp for more than one hour and here is our battery indication tap on the shutter release button once and now it starts to take a stabilized time-lapse video. That is 
nice if you don't have any access to your camera display. Maybe with gloves, maybe you have the camera on a helmet, maybe you're surfing and since this camera display is not made for wet hands, you can use these buttons as well to change any kind of settings. Tap on the shutter release button once and then it stops that time warp. To go now from time warp into the video mode, tap on the on and off button. And now it uses always the last settings we were in. As you can see now, it's using 1080p, 60 frames per second, white. I took already 26 clips. With these kind of settings, I can take more than two hours of video. And here's the battery level. To start a video, tap on the shutter release button. Hello, hello, hello. Tap on it again to stop that video. Last point, you can also jump into the photo mode by pressing the on and off button once again. It's the photo mode, time warp, video, photo. Let me show you something very quick on the other side. Let's say I didn't use time warp and I used time lapse. And let's say instead of 1080p, I used 4K with 24 frames per second. Go out of these settings, use the on and off button at the side to scroll through your menu. Turn the camera around once again. And as you can see, now it gives you a different kind of symbol. Tap on the on and off button, hold it for say like half a second and jump between the photo mode, time-lapse mode and the video mode. And now you see a difference. Because now we're recording in 4K, 24 frames per second, we recorded already 27 clips. We would be able with these kind of settings to record for more than one hour. And here's the battery indication. Tap on the shutter release button to record a video. Tap on it to stop a video. Jump into the time-lapse mode. Instead of taking a time warp video, we're doing now a time lapse video since the camera always uses the last settings you were in in this case we would record time lapse with in 4k an interval of 10 seconds wide and we took already 28 clips and with these kind of settings we would be able to take more than one hour of 4k time lapse we are approaching the end of this review and now it's time to connect your GoPro Hero 8 with your smartphone. I'm using an iPhone 8 plus 265 gigabytes of storage. Swipe with your finger from the top to the bottom, go to preferences, say connection, wireless connection, on, connect a new device. No device have been connected to your GoPro. Now I say connect. Choose what you would like to connect. Either you would like to connect to a GoPro app, a smart remote or to a Bluetooth remote. There might be several other um, devices coming out in the near future that you would be able to connect your GoPro to. But in this case, I would like to connect my GoPro Hero 8 Black to my iPhone. So select GoPro app. Take your phone. It doesn't matter if you have an iPhone or an Android device, or if you have a tablet or a smartphone, enable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Go to the GoPro Hero app, which is available for free. Add a camera. We found your GoPro. Oh, nice. Connect camera. Bluetooth pairing request pair. And now on the GoPro, it says connection successful. Wow, that was easy. Change the name of your camera. By tapping on that little X here, you can choose a different name, but at the moment, this name is fine for me. Save new camera. And now it's connecting. New name saved. Let's go. Wants to join Wi-Fi network from my phone. Uh, yeah, hit join. And now you can see what your GoPro sees at this moment. As you can see, here's my finger, just you have an idea 
it leaks a little bit behind, so maybe like one second or so, but you can see exactly now what your camera sees. In this case, the GoPro Hero 8. So you can take your GoPro, take it into your garden, be away like, I think like maximum, like let's say 50 feet. It depends on how many things or connections are in between who might disturb the signal. But it's a nice way of doing remote controlling of your GoPro and it's for free. At the moment I'm in time-lapse mode, I can go to video mode. With the current settings I'm in, I'm recording in 4K, 24 frames per second wide and the memory card may take another one hour and 55 minutes. GPS is engaged, Wi-Fi is on, here's my battery indication. If I tap on that symbol here, I can choose, I can adjust all different kind of settings. I can, I can read out the SD card capacity, delete last file, I can, take, uh, I can choose another language, anti-flicker, video compression, LED brightness, it's like all kind of different stuff you need maybe to adjust. But these kinds of settings you can do exactly on your GoPro as well. So this is just a different interface. To start a video, tap on this big button here and now it's recording a 4K video to stop it. Tap on that big button once again. If you jump down here and you select a different frame rate, let's take 1080p, 240 frames per second. If I start to record a video now, you won't be able to see it. However, the camera records that video. Why don't you see it? Your phone, in this case, my iPhone 8 Plus, is not capable of playing back frame rates of 240 frames per second. However, the camera did record this video anyways. If I jump back into the menu, take 1080p and a frame rate of 30 frames per second, select done, you're back in the game and the camera records now this video and with a preview. You can jump into the photo mode, jump into the time-lapse mode, all the settings which were available on the GoPro, you have them here on your phone, it's just a different interface. And really on the right side is the live feature, which allows you to take a live stream with your GoPro in combination with your phone. Your phone needs an active internet connection, either to your 4G network or to your local Wi-Fi network. That is a really cool feature. Maybe you have a really, really nice party at home and you want to share it with all your friends. You can share it on YouTube, you can share it on Vimeo or Facebook. You just need to log in, choose the network, like your home network or your 4G network, and then you can go live. In this case, I'm using the photo mode, just in white. I can now show you what, what is going to happen if I take linear, select done, take now a photo, zoom in, take another one. And that's an easy way of how to do remote controlling and up here you can see I have space now if I take only my photos in JPEG. I have space for another 23,266 photos. Select back and then you have that point down here which says view media. So these ones are all the kind of photos I already took today with you. Let's take this one here very quick. Downloading media. These ones are a couple photos we took together, I guess. That was the continuous shooting of 30 photos per three seconds or something. Total file size, 70.6 megabytes, view media. And now I can save it to my phone as well. Takes a few seconds and you would be now able to review these files in your normal photo library. I think it's a bit easier using an Android device in this case, but in general it works fine on iOS as well. Here's a video. Record the video once again. Nice. It's another video. Straight away. You can also... You can of course download this video onto your phone as well. 
you can add these kind of clips. Let's say this one was too long and I only need one and a half seconds out of this video. Tap on next, download to app, preparing photo, preparing clip, media saved, and then you can save it straight onto your phone. That's a really, really nice app with a really, really easy interface. Go to your image a library on your phone. These ones were all the pictures I just downloaded with you. Make sure if you would like to share these kind of pictures which you took using your GoPro with your friends to connect to either your 4G network or to your local Wi-Fi network. And since the GoPro is not equipped with internet, I can't share these photos at the moment. So make sure once you would like to share any kind of photos or videos you took using your GoPro camera to connect now to the internet using either 4G or a local Wi-Fi network. Otherwise it won't work. And once the pictures or videos are on your phone, you can share them via Telegram, mail, WhatsApp, upload them to a Dropbox or Instagram straight away. If you are unhappy with any kind of results, you can delete these photos, of course. This one here, if I don't like it, you can edit them, you can set them as your favorite or make them as your background images. One last point, you might have seen it in this video 100 times, but I explain it anyways to you. To playback any files or to delete any files, slide with your finger from the bottom to the top. Here are all the files that we took together. You can delete them from your GoPro Hero 8 Black. As you might have heard now, that is a video. You can select a different audio level. You can mute the video. I can delete this video from the memory card which is inside the GoPro Hero 8 Black. This video is a 1080p video with 240 frames per second. I can select slow-mo on. Here is a slow motion video. This down here was the little symbol I was explaining at the beginning of this tutorial. So this is a 1080p video using 240 frames per second. I can make a slow motion video straight out of the camera if I want to. I can uh, slide forward and backward using this one. I can tag some scenes inside this video. Maybe I was happy with this scene so I can highlight it and this highlight tag would be also seen on your GoPro Hero app. I can delete this video from my memory card. I can delete several clips by using the multi-select feature up here and select them all at once. To go out of this menu, go to the top, slide now from the top to the bottom since the gray line is up here and you're back in the game. Whoa, after this video finally done. So I hope you understood what I explained to you within the last minutes. If you have any open questions, please make sure to post a comment below. Maybe someone else had already the same question like you and I answered already. So you can see that on the bottom here of this video. All the things and accessories I used to record these videos are listed at the link in the video description below, which will guide you to Amazon. Thanks a lot for your undivided attention. All the best from Frankfurt and see you soon. By the way, there are a couple of example videos and photos in the description below.